Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to the booth. Special guest, got Nitro J in the house. What up, y'all? Rubik's Cube. Yeah. And today we're gonna talk about the uh, RC four wheel drive uh, hard body paint job. Replica of the Rubik's Cube. This will be 2.0. <laughs> Jay, tell us what you uh, what inspired you for this paint job. Well, when I got in the hobby, I was basically just by myself in the crawl scene when it all started. Nick Moore was got in right in the, around the same time, so shout out Nick. But uh, we got into scale builders pretty quick, and uh, I'm a Chevrolet guy, and I've seen this for sale, $175, ready to run, on Craigslist, with the K5 body. Uh, it had RC four-wheel drive wheels and tires on it at the time, which is a little different, but not much has changed, just the colors. It was all blue and white painted on the inside. The first step I took was painted blue and white on the outside. The whole rig was that color. Then I put a red fender, I get bored quick. Then I put a red door. Then I'd switch the hood color. Fender, tailgate, top, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I just kept going, you know, real wood, real wood dash, put the mirrors on, lined it. If you notice, it's all body lined. Each panel looks like it should have been bolted to the truck. And that's what I kind of went for. Like I replaced that's every piece. That's a good piece. hidden detail in there. Adds depth to the art. It separates your color. Yeah. So try that out. Um, and man, I love this rig, man. It's, it's a fun rig. It's been on the trail for a long time. If you go to NitroJ650 on Instagram, you can actually see the progress I just told you about this truck. That rig does look like it's been on the trail a long time, and it looks like <laughs> you've wheeled it, rolled it, hit mm -hmm. the junkyard, found a fender, mm -hmm. bolted it up, and you're back out on the road, and that just looks like it stood the test of time, <laughs> and it just keeps getting new parts, and it's building. This was originally called the Suburban Redneck. If you've been following along enough, you would have known. I'm surprised no one said, hey, but Rubik's Cube <laughs> took the name right after, so. But, it's uh, a good fit for <laughs> it, though. <laughs> Because you could never, I've never completed one of you. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what we got here from JJ Customs, by the way, we got this uh, what is it, RC four-wheel drive hard body blazer. Beautiful. Listen to that. Hard body. We can't tell if it's metal or plastic in certain areas. We think it's a metal hood, plastic body, but... Some people think it's painted. Some people think it's blue plastic. That's how great of job RC four wheel drive did on. Man, the detail in this thing comes with an interior, mm -hmm. it, a dash. It's got steering wheel, mirrors, door handles. This realistic. is actually a kit in itself. Good like to know. You, you can't buy that. You know, you buy a box and you put that thing together. So we have a milestone ahead of us to try to create this masterpiece of the Rubik's cube. You see here, we got all our Tamiya colors. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna paint this one on the outside as well. Jay, what do you think we should do, man? We should put a good base, good scuff, and a primer coat first? Yeah, first tape off the blue, because we're gonna keep the blue on the outside. Okay, we're going to so, save the blue. Save the blue, mask it off. You're gonna peel that off last. Then, yeah, you could definitely do a light scuff. Yeah. Primer, primer's your best friend. Never forget the primer, because that's what the paint really sticks to. I know it's so, cliche to say that but it'll more likely run off of this in the primer that yeah. paint really yeah you need it to bite to. it really bonds to it. it makes your job a lot easier with the primer you know um you also want to make sure that you find yourself a good primer suitable for plastic mm -hmm. and definitely when you're mixing your paints like this we want to make sure that we don't mix the chemicals so we try to stay with the same brand if possible yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, with this one, we might, I'll, I'll do some research on it, but we might throw a quick spray of adhesion promoter after we scuff it. Adhesion promoter will help the primer and, and everything to bite to this yeah, shell. It and, will. Um, it will. You know, what we want by the primer is once we paint the other colors over the top and after Chris rolls this off a cliff. This is Chris's <laughs> body. This is Chris, so yeah. you know it's going to be smashed up. But we want that realistic look of a cherry paint job that rolled down a rocky cliff and it's got scratches, it's got scratches. and scrapes and the under primer is showing. And um, we want to mimic that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that thing is beautiful and that thing is, everybody knows the Rubik's Cube. So since we can't obtain that one, we're going to, we're going to, you know, 
We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> do part two for Chris because yeah. he's been trying to get that from Jay and Jay's not letting go and I don't blame him. <laughs> it's hard, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so stick along for the ride. Mm -hmm. We're gonna mass this off and we'll have little little uh, bits where we're, we talk about the step that we're at in the paint job and um, we'll have photos and some video and we'll get this one out to you guys as soon as we can and Jay, I'm gonna send them out. See y'all on the trail. Keep watching Highway 1 RC and Off 1 Crawlers on YouTube. Take care, guys. All right, YouTube. Hey, what's up? You guys just seen the intro with me and Nitro J talking about the Rubik's Cube. And uh, here we are on another day. We're getting ready to start prepping this guy out. We're going to remove off all the trim work that we can. Then we're gonna use some 600 grit smoothing sandpaper. You guys seen in my last video, I like to use that stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and just mask off the stuff that we're keeping blue. I'm just gonna lightly scuff this thing down, kind of knock the shine down a little bit and throw some adhesion promoter and some primer. And then uh, we're gonna start this wonderful project we're about to do, Rubik's Cube 2.0, recreating the masterpiece. Okay, those last four pictures I showed you of this front grill, just so you don't snap it, it's kind of a tricky little deal to get out. And it comes out the same way, so when you reinstall it, lock those tabs right there over those little nubs where the screw hole is, and just push it back in like, pretty much like that there. Okay, now the grill's off and the bumpers are off, we're gonna go ahead and move the interior. Start off with those two screws back there on the firewall. hood latches or whatever they are the hood arms the spring arms they're just kind of flopping around and they're going to kind of rub on the paint after i paint it so i'm just going to remove them stick them to the bottom of the hood with some tape so i don't lose them The windows out of the back of the blazer, the top, the removable top. We'll take the glass out, pop those little pieces out, get this thing ready to paint. That's pretty much it. Next step will be to kind of wet sand this thing. I think that's what we're going to do because, you know, we're going to add another layer of paint. So we'll see if we can kind of knock down that shine, wet sand this up and get it ready the areas that are blue on nitro j's truck already we're just going to mass i believe it's the roof and the two rear quarters are going to stay blue except for a white piece in the middle so a lot of masking and unmasking and waiting on paint i told chris i hope you're not in a hurry for this one rubik's cube is going to take a while to complete but uh, I'll bring you guys for the ride and stay tuned. And here we got 
the rig, dunk it in the water, wet my little sand and paper down, and, and I'm trying to demonstrate this for you guys real quick. Just kind of wet sand it down. You can see where the paint was already kind of loose. This is only 60 grit, I mean uh, 600 grit, it's fairly light, you know, and so see the imperfections that were already there. We're not going to do the back, you can see the difference where it's drying. Just scuffing it down a little bit. Alright, we're back after wet sanding. You can see the difference from where I did and didn't do it. Let's see uh, with the light on. A few little areas I need to go hit again. Get a little closer in there. Big spot right there. I gotta get a little bit right there in the front. But you get the gist of it. So we knocked it down, you know, get a little bit more in right there. But basically, you know, we're kind of giving it something to stick to, scuffing that down. Then with some adhesion promoter and some primer and all those other colors. So far, so good, though. So, <clears throat> all right, next we are making a like shell with tape. I'm out of paper, so it is what it is. We're gonna mask, continue masking this off. All right, after about two hours of taping, I think I got this thing pretty much masked off on the inside. So we don't wanna ruin that factory interior. So, there's the outside masked off. Colors, colors. The shell will be a different color. Tailgate will be a different color. Hood's a different color. This fender's a different color. That door is a different color. So, there we are. Full mask, cocoon, in and out. I want no overspray inside this thing.